This is the third episode in an alternate history series on what if the Kalmar Union never fell. In this episode, I'll be taking a look at Vinland, a former Scandinavian colony and the only Scandinavian settler colony. Officially, Vinland is a federal parliamentary constitutional monarchy. This essentially means that it is a parliamentary democracy like Scandinavia over in Europe with Queen Margaret as its official head of state, but of course she has no real power in Vinland. Vinland is functionally fully independent from Scandinavia, and the major difference between it and Scandinavia is that Vinland, unlike Scandinavia, does not consist of several countries, but is instead organized in a federal system where it is one country with several provinces within it. Geographically, Vinland is quite diverse. The nation's core is certainly in the south in Huansland and along the Leif Eriksson River in Leifsland. Here there are many major cities and urban centers, as well as very productive farmland in between these urban centers. Further north and to the east it is significantly colder, and the climate is more comparable to Sweden and Norway back in Scandinavia. The landscape is covered by vast forests, with the occasional urban settlement along the coasts and some regions with farmland. As you go west into Vinipe, the vast forest will eventually become prairie and farmland as you get closer to the border with the United States. Further north, you will find Helluland and Greenland, both of which are mostly uninhabited arctic tundra, or one giant glacier in the case of Greenland. Only a few towns exist along the coastline in these regions. As mentioned before, Vinland is divided into provinces. More specifically, seven provinces, which are listed here on the left. These provinces, in the order of most to least populated, are as follows. Huonsland, or Huron's Land, named so after the Huron tribe in the region before colonization, is the most populous and important province of Vinland. It is home to more than half of the nation's population and several major Vinlander cities, such as the capital, Nulun. Outside of the massive metropolitan area surrounding Nulun, most of the province consists of flat farmland, with countless medium to smaller sized urban centers in between. Leifsland or Leifsland, is named after the Leif Erikson River, which in turn is of course named after the Norse explorer who discovered America centuries before modern Vinland was established. Leifsland, being the second most populous province in Vinland, has in many ways also become the rival province to Huansland. It's home to the second largest city in Vinland, Charlotte Amelia, as well as the historical former capital of Vinland, Christiansfort. Much like Huansland, it's a fairly dense province with lots of smaller towns and farmland. These farmlands and towns are, however, mostly limited to the regions closer to the Leif Erikson River, and the rest of the province is mostly forested. Winnipeg, or Winnipeg, named after the Native American word for the lake in the west of the province, is the third largest province in Vinland. It's home to the largest city outside of the urban core, Lyngdal. Winnipeg as a whole is kind of divided in two, with the north and east inland regions being relatively forested and more sparsely populated whereas the prairie and farmlands in the far western edges of the province, as well as the regions closer to the Great Lakes, have a higher population density. Markland, or Markland, named so by Leif Erikson himself and meaning forest land in his dialect of Norse, is the fourth most populated province in Vinland and also the last of the major provinces with any notable population. It is, as the name suggests, very forested. It does have a few sizable towns and the more notable city of Nytronjem, Generally, people live along the coast, as it has a somewhat similar climate to Norway, but the inland region gets incredibly cold during the winter, and thus has a very low population. Karlsbukten, or Karls Bay, is the most populated of the three quote-unquote minor provinces. Despite being large geographically, it has only a population of around 63,000. There are a few towns along the coastal regions, such as its largest settlement, the town of Sørensfort but they are all very isolated, with a few road connections that are there going north to south. This means that if you want to travel from town to town, you either have to wait for winter and make use of the icy winter roads, spend days first driving south, or sail by boat, which is only possible during the summer. The isolation of course comes from the vast majority of the province consisting of arctic wetlands, which makes expanding infrastructure a massive undertaking. Grönland, or Greenland, is the second most populous of the three minor provinces. Much like Karlsbukten, it is incredibly sparsely populated, in the case of Greenland, because of the giant ice sheet covering most of the island. Despite this harsh arctic climate, there are a few towns along the coasts, such as the largest settlement of Gotthob, or Nuuk. Greenland is also known for its local Inuit population, which make up a majority in Greenland. Heluland, or Helgeland, is the least populated province in Vinland, and not without reason. 
Its landscape is incredibly cold and desolate, being mostly just rocky terrain, with the occasional spot of moss growing in the summer. There are a few settlements along the coasts, with the largest being Fjordhavn. Helgeland, much like Greenland, is also a mostly Inuit province. Vinland is a nation with many major towns and cities, two of which even rival many of the major cities over in the United States. And with others, whilst not being the largest or wealthiest, have a rich history and are among the oldest cities in North America. Ranked in terms of population, these cities are as follows. Nulund, or New Lund, the largest city and capital of Vinland. With a metropolitan population of 5.5 million, it's one of the largest cities in North America, rivaling major American cities such as Miami, Philadelphia, and Houston. It's also one of Vinland's more modern cities, as it first became Vinland's major city and capital after independence from Scandinavia. Charlotte Amelia, or Charlotte Amelie, the second largest city in Vinland by a wide margin, and a rival city to Nulon. With a population of 3.5 million in its metropolitan area, it is also among the more notable cities in North America, being comparable to American urban areas such as the San Francisco Bay Area or Boston. Being a fair bit older than Nulon, but also having seen significant growth in more recent times, Charlotte Amelia has become more of a mix of both old, historical Scandinavian architecture and more modern skyscrapers and high-rises. Falikstal, or Frederikstal. Sitting comfortably right in between the major urban centers in Huonsland and Leifsland, Falikstal has become the link between the two regions and is seen by some as the nation's cultural capital. It was actually considered as a compromise capital after Vinland became independent. But in the end, Nulund won out. Christiansfort, or Christiansfort, is by far the most historically significant city in Vinland. It was the capital of the Vinland colony when it was under Scandinavian rule and is among the oldest cities in North America, giving the city a very European feel. Today, Christiansfort is still Vinland's main port city and is the link between it and Europe due to its location by the coast. The next six cities I'll go over more briefly. They are as follows. Lyngdal, a modern city close to the American border and right by the western Vinland prairie. Tuopea, one of Huonland's many urban centers right across from the American city of Detroit. Solrød, another of Huonland's many urban centers surrounded by the southern farmlands. Neutronium, an old historic city on the eastern coast of Vinland. Ørebro, yet another of the countless urban centers in Huonsland. And finally, Olafsberg, Winnipeg's second largest city, right by the Great Lakes and US border. Vinland has a population of a bit over 22 million, making it the third most populous nation in North America after the United States and Mexico. Vinland, whilst not being quite as diverse as the United States, still is much more so a nation of immigrants than their mother country of Scandinavia. The largest ethno-linguistic group in Vinland is Scandinavian-speaking Vinlanders, which make up 71.6% of the population. These people are a mix of various European settlers, mostly from Scandinavia, but also from Germany, Italy, and many other European countries. The second largest group is Native Americans, not including the Inuit peoples. Native Americans make up around 4.4% of the population and live as a minority group not visible on the map across the nation, but they do make up a majority in the more remote northern regions of Vinland. The third largest group is English speakers originating from the United States, who make up 3.8% of the population. Most of these people are more recent American immigrants living as a minority group across the nation and thus of course aren't visible on the map as they don't make up a majority. But one place they do make up a majority is in the far west of Winnipeg, where many American settlers have lived in the more rural regions for generations, since before the border between the US and Vinland were clearly defined. The next largest group, Vinlanders with African ancestry, make up around 3.5% of the population. After that is the Inuit people, who make up just 0.2% of the population. The remaining 16.5% of the population are a mix of many more recent immigrant groups from across the world. When it comes to the economy, Vinland is very wealthy. It has a GDP of 1.26 trillion and is the 15th largest economy in the world, just barely ahead of Mexico, which does of course also make it the second largest economy in North America after the United States. Per capita, it sits just barely below Scandinavia in 10th, with almost 57,000. Vinland has close relations with many nations in the world, but the two closest would certainly be Scandinavia and the United States. As Vinland is a member of NATO, a close American ally, and also shares its only border with the US, the two nations have grown quite close. Today it's very easy and quite common for Americans to move to Vinland, and vice versa. Both of these nations have had quite an interesting influence on each other, as the United States exports lots of culture and media out and into Vinland. But Vinland is also a popular tourist destination for Americans, 
and its Norse descended language and culture is one of high intrigue in the United States, where they'll often be jokingly referred to as their Viking neighbors. Of course, Vinland also has an incredibly close relationship with Scandinavia, as they're both a part of the same cultural sphere and share a common language. Apart from the obvious cultural connections, Vinland is also a member of the Nordic Council, which promotes cooperation between members, shares a common currency, and allows free movement and travel. But that's all for now. Stay tuned for more content, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button if you haven't already. If you could also like the video if you enjoyed it, and leave suggestions and input in the comments, I would greatly appreciate it. See you in my next video.